Hi, welcome to Your Basic, the podcast where we read Ryo fantasy and avoid our adult responsibilities. I'm one of your hosts, Deadly, and I'm still mad about the Aragon film. And I'm your other host, Danny, and as soon as they cast Sam Claflin as Finnick, I knew we were golden. So today's episode is inspired by the Akatar TV show announcement and Shadow and Bone coming out this month. So we thought we'd talk to you about good, bad, ugly, phenomenal <laughs> uh, book to yeah. TV show slash film adaptions that have come out over the years. Yeah. There's a lot to go into because, there, as we say, there are some fantastic adaptations and there are some that uh, we still talk about to this day because they're so bad. Yes, there are some that should never see the light of day again and we would be happy to watch them. <laughs> I think we're going to start with our... We always start with the things that we didn't like in every single yeah, podcast then we can that end we on do. A high it's note. a theme. Yeah, exactly. We like to end yeah, on a high note here. We... We like to get the negativity out. <laughs> but I feel like on this one, there's going to the be a lot of negativity. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of negativity on today's yeah. episode. Ooh, the list, yeah, we have a sorry, list in front of us. <laughs> and it's, it's bad. When we made the list, we were like, bad, 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 bad. And it was, yeah. Yeah, so um, maybe we'll go probably, get, we'll so... say, we're going through the ones we like, disliked, the one that's what we mm-hmm. liked, and then the ones that are bad but we still like them anyway because of like but nostalgia. So... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Nostalgia. And so... Yeah. And nostalgia are just some stuff we just love, even though it is bad. Yeah. Because it's all we'll ever trash. get. That, Sometimes you like we'll a bit of trash. It it's like a car crash. Oh. You can't look away. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> but you keep, it's... you like it. You know what I mean? But you keep, yeah, you're fixed to it completely. And yeah, and as I say, nostalgia does play a big part in it. Um, although it can't save some of these because some of these we should have nostalgia for but they're so bad <laughs> that we can't no we can't yeah i agree so shall we start with the one that's oh. well i think this one this is how we we bonded so as you know that yeah deadly and i we met when we when they released well we met through shadow hunters didn't we through cassandra mm-hmm. claire's book shadow hunters and we kind of like yeah. that's well, we didn't meet through that that's how we bonded over the books so yeah i think we were both around the same age so we went to see city of bones the first adaption of Ooh. the shadow hunter series in the cinema i think did you see it in the cinema deadly yeah yeah i did i did i assume but that film wasted that money (laughs) i think that's when i really first started to appreciate how hollywood did films badly because with the other ones maybe like so for like we'll talk about them later but there's another one that we both despise i think i was i watched that film first but didn't know how truly bad it was until i read the book and then i was like this is horrific but with this i'd read the books i was a fan before and then yeah. I watched the, f- the film and was like Jesus this is terrible this is genuinely <laughs> terrible yeah I went with my little angelic rune necklace on um I was not ready I was not ready for what they did to our our show our beloved characters I know I think I went in full cosplay I went as mayor but yeah you can go as like that was like casual because it's urban fantasy, so it was just like a, pa- yeah, a plaid at least shirt it's urban and like a I don't yeah. know, like a hat or something. It was like I was trying to like <laughs> I was trying to summon my inner two thousand and eight because that's obviously when the Shadowhunters books are set. Yes. So I was like trying to yeah, God, so embarrassing. But I literally so with this this film. I literally remember sitting there through the whole thing and then at the end, you know, if you haven't seen... When we've decided we're not putting spoiler warnings on this one because we just... Yeah. If you've not watched the films already, I, it's either not worth they, yeah, it. Yeah, they've been out since like mid-2000s. Yeah, so it's either not worth it or you're just going to have to deal with the spoilers, I'm afraid. But yeah. at the end of City of Bones, <laughs> the film, there's like a bit where... Um, Clary is on the back of Jace's motorbike and he like she's she puts his arm down and bearing in mind this is when they found out that they're supposed brother and sister and yeah um so she puts her arms around him and then he goes when I told you I hadn't seen an angel in real life earlier 
I lied. <laughs> and I literally stood there and I went, what the fuck? And I literally said out, <laughs> out loud in the cinema and everyone was like laughing because it was just the worst. I have never, it was cringing me out. Oh my God. And then, so when we went to go to Cassie Clare and Holly Black's book tour, we watched the film together. Um, and it was so funny. But then we watched the, because you had like the the special features on the DVD. Yeah, I had the um, And we watched an interview with the cast and they just were like, yeah, we know the fans are going to like it. We don't care. Oh my god. And it was insulting, like, as a fan to watch that and say that the cast didn't care. So this is why I can know, I mean, Deadly and I are in, like, a group on Facebook, like, called Shadowhunters. Um, we're in it for, like, for the jokes, to be fair. It's hilarious. That group. It is funny. That the group. group's hilarious. Um, but so many people on there, like, absolutely love the, sh- the films. And I just cannot, I can never forgive them for, I... like having a cast that said all that like stuff about how they didn't care about Completely. the fans oh my god the only, the best bit is when they're in the bar and cassie is at one of those tables yeah that's literally the only bit and i okay so everything about this film is bad it, the, the the script yeah the the production value is not horrific i've seen worse but yeah i think they had a quite yeah. big budget they must have but the costumes the costumes are horrific. The cast, don't talk to me about the cast. The cast, I don't care what anybody says, the cast was terrible. The only person in that cast, there's two people in that whole cast that I actually mm-hmm. appreciated. I think that Lily Collins was the perfect Clary. I think that they couldn't yeah. have pas- cast her any better. And I think mm-hmm. that the guy that they got to play Magnus was phenomenal. Oh, yeah, he was amazing. Looked really, really looked the part. I'm not sure about his acting, but the, he looked the part, definitely. No, yeah, I think he. He looked the part, and I feel like he just got trashed by the script because the script was so bad. Yeah. And, and like, they didn't give him any Magnus. No, I agree. But he's the guy that's... He's the guy that is on the cover of the Bane Chronicles, isn't he, as well? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, the Bane Chronicles. I think he, a great book. I think he passed read. away. Oh, did he? I think so. Oh, no. Yeah, so Rip Magnus. But we we thought you were a fantastic Magnus. Yeah, but... we thought absolutely. I am. I will never forgive them for what they did to Alec. <laughs> Alec, who is one of my favourite characters in all of like literary history, not just Shadowhunters. What they did! Oh my god! And then when the actor was in that behind the scenes thing, flashing his Louboutins, I know, and just saying how he didn't care, I was like, we we just we I don't remember Dudley and I were discussing when we were watching the film. We were like, the fact that it's meant to be a big deal that like Alex closeted gay, and then they had him strutting around in a, like a leather vest. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh no, I'm I'm definitely straight. Wears like a sleeveless leather vest <laughs> to a <laughs> leather vest. Which and it's like I can understand that like they were going to that like club like Magnus's party, so oh. they had to look fabulous. But the fact that is he like is he dressed him in the like, leather vest, but then like Jace was in like a t shirt. I was like, um, could you look any more gay? Especially because like. Alec would never, like... Alec's, like, oh, it's, from it's the jumpers. The... <sighs> yeah, completely, because when Magnus and him go on that, like, first date, he makes him wear that t-shirt that says, like, wink if you want me or something. Yeah. Alec is so uncomfortable. Yeah. Because he's just like, I want to wear a sweater with a hole in it and blend in. <sighs> I just... We'll, we'll get on to good adaptations of Alec later, because Matthew Daddario. Oh. But, oh. Also, I just realised that I completely just forgot about um, Robert Sheehan playing Simon. Oh my god, Sorry, incredible casting. Incredible, sorry, I, I literally just completely <laughs> forgot about that because he was perfect as Simon, oh my he god. And his accent was phenomenal. perfect. Oh. Yeah, and I know Cass picked him... Um, Mm. like specifically because she wanted him to play Simon because that's how she yeah. saw Simon. Um I really loved him. I hated Jamie Campbell Bauer as Jace. Oh my god. Jace is not scrawny. I don't care what anyone says and Jamie's scrawny. No. And all I see is the the Sweeney Todd 
Joanna singing. Yeah, same. Or Lil Scrawny Boy or Grindelwald. Grindelwald, yeah, jumping out the window. <laughs> That's all I see. And I understand him and Lily yeah. were, like seeing each other, so the chemistry was meant to be there and everything. But no. But it wasn't. He just wasn't Jace. He wasn't Jace. He's nothing like Jace. Jace I is... honestly. Jace is very tricky to cast. Yeah. Because I don't think anything will... Because the way he's described, I don't think there's anyone alive who is Jace. I think we all struggle, because obviously I saw Alex Pettifer. Because, you know, that picture on the first book? True. I saw that picture and I thought, yeah. my, my mind instantly goes Alex Pettifer. So when we didn't get Alex Pettifer, I was like, well, you know. Alex Pettifer would have been perfect. Especially around that era. That was like the right time. And he was like British. So it kind of like yeah. went back to the... Well, Jamie Campbell Bower. And that's another thing. I'm sorry. I just want to put this out here. <laughs> Jamie Campbell Bower is British and they just made him have the British accent, even though he's meant to have been brought <laughs> up in New York. I'm confused. Oh, I just no. hate that film. I'm sorry. Everything about it is oh, bad. It's, it's fun to watch for a laugh. Yeah, to get, um, yeah, for a laugh. But other than that, Oof. Valentine. I can't even talk about Valentine. <laughs> I'm sure the guy did... I can't remember the guy's name, but it's the one from um, Bend It Like Beckham, who's Irish, who's like... When she, when he like... When Jess gets called a slur and um, Bend It Like Beckham, and he goes, oh, I know, I'm Irish, and I like, acts like it's the same person. Like, that same thing, like, that they would... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, like... I absolutely hate that oh. scene, but... Um, yeah, it's him, and I'm pretty sure I saw a thing where he, like, method acted Valentine, what? and that's why he was so unhinged no. and weird. I'm literally sure, and he Ugh. just played him like a psychopath. Yeah, I was like... completely. I mean, Valentine is, but that's... Yeah, but I yeah, got past the not... point. No, but I think that Valentine is meant to be, like... Valentine is... He's really composed, and, like... Charming. So it, it makes people want yeah. to follow him. That's why he had so many followers, like, Mars and everyone. They followed him because he was charming, and he was just... Yeah. Nuts. No, I, I was like, who would follow this guy? And he, I Yeah, Valentine, in the, in the book, because I was sent up with Valentine, I was like, Yeah, yes. well, that's how it's meant to be. And he had that little rat tail oh raid in the film. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, what am I watching? Oof, yeah. So, Big. Ooh. Sorry, this is just an interlude. Was... I just got a dodgy text from HSBC saying that I like <coughs> someone had logged into my account even though I don't bank with HSBC. So, see you later, scammers. <laughs> yeah, I got one from Royal Mail from a mobile number that said I needed to pay a customs charge. I know, I might reply back and be like, so... do you prefer Jamie Campo Bauer as Jace or do you prefer <laughs> Dominic Sherwood? We're having a discussion on the podcast. Let me know, please. <laughs> XOXO. I mean, I still, I, I love Dom because I just love the cast, but I still don't see him as Jace. Oh my God, really. I don't see him as Jace at all. I didn't hate him as much as I hated Jamie as Jace, but no. I don't see him as Jace. They've never gotten right. No, but now you've said Alex Pettifer, I'm like, oh, that would have been perfect. He was perfect, and I feel like he was the like go-to fan cast on like Tumblr at that point. Oh, yeah. So I think Absolutely. we were all going to be heartbroken when it wasn't him, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, Isabel, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Could they have cast her any worse? No. No, they couldn't have. Because Isabel has so much character and... From the get... Just... Yeah, from the get-go it's meant to be. She's charming and beautiful and stunning. And I'm not saying that the, the woman that played her wasn't... She was really beautiful. But she just mm. had no personality. And I just... just like carpal cut I know, and like, Simon was meant to be enamoured with her from the get-go. And she, I just yeah. was like, okay... And he just wasn't. There was no chemistry. Do you know what? I shipped Cla- like Clary and Lenny Simon more than I did anybody else. I know. The they had more natural chemistry. I know. God, and that's the number one sin. You know what? Is another thing like I absolutely hate about that film is when like we go and like Simon <laughs> wakes up and he's like drawing. She's drawing Jace, <laughs> and he's like topless, and it just makes me cringe so bad. Like I do not know what they were thinking. Oh. I, I honestly I think about that film and my brain goes to static. I'm like I I can't deal, fully can't deal. I hate that film. Like I'll I'll never forgive them for doing it that bad. I had so much hope as well when they were like, when they like I remember when they released the trailer, and they were like it has Hodge doing the, like the voiceover and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the stories are true and I was like ah I'm so excited and then I like spent all my money getting to the cinema and I watched it and was like 
You're kidding. You are kidding. This is terrible. <laughs> this is what you've done. It broke my heart. Um, another another time that happened. Aragon. Wow. So I remember when I first watched Aragon. I was at school, primary school, and I was in like year four or five. I can't remember. And my teacher brought it in, and we watched it, and we were just obsessed. I was obsessed with Aragon. I knew from the get go that I was just obsessed with dragons and fantasy. That's literally what started my fantasy yeah. addiction off watching Aragon when I was in primary school. Yeah. And then, like, I got to high school and I was like trying to find new fantasy books to read. And I was like, oh, I'll read Aragon because I love the film so much. And then I read the book and was like, yeah. this book is amazing. The film is terrible. The film is dire. Oh, so I... Aragon was one of the first book series I properly read, like, as a kid. And I loved it. I absolutely adored it. I used to draw Sephira everywhere. I had, like, fan-made posters that I'd made myself. So when the film came out, I was, like, ready to go. I made my mum take me. I was so mad. I think that's the most mad I've been after any film. Because, like... What they did to Durza, the shade. What the the freaking they changed the the like elegant, creepy bird people in robes to like zombies made out of bugs. Yeah, and like he was like it was like a mummy. It was like they had like oh. oh my god, like bandages. And I remember like I was reading the book and I was going, Oh, they didn't have this in the film and then like I really I wanna watch the film again after I read the books, so I was like, That's what that was meant to be. That's yeah, how bad it was. It was, was horrific. Was fuming and then like having joss stone as the woman who reads the runes and oh my god joss stone like i loved i loved joss stone at the time but like oh my god i didn't realize that was joss stone i'm high on drugs jesus and then the <laughs> king like the king i had the accent like the the bronx accent i was like <gasps> oh my god where are we what even was that oh my oh. god and i can't even remember the main girl's name but they completely just got rid of all oh. her character and made her just a love interest. Yeah, uh, 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 is it Arya? I'm googling it. I'm googling it. Arya. It might be like Game of Thrones. Oh uh, yeah, it is Arya. Yeah, it is Arya. Yeah, Arya. Um, she was so badass, and she was it's like her and her and Aragorn have like a proper enemies. I don't want to say enemies to lovers, but she's like playing really hard to get. The whole way through the book yeah. series, and like, never, what the hell was that relationship? But the film, and like, she looks so much older than Aragon, so it weirded me out that I could never understand yeah. why they tried to make her more of a love interest because she was so the actress looked so much older than the guy that played Aragon. One thing I will say about that is that Aragon looked quite—he looked quite young, the guy that played Aragon, which was quite accurate. Mm. To, yeah, I I think Aragon was good actually. It's just the whole rest of the film. <laughs> I know. I bet he thought that, that was his big. And you know what? I googled how how big of a budget Aragon had. It had a bigger budget than the Lord of the Rings. It literally oh had God. a bigger budget. Literally, I think they must have spent it on Bron, the the guy that they who 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 paid him because he's quite a good act, like big actor. I can't remember his name. Off the yeah, top of my head. he is. He is. Um. Uh, but they must have spent. And, and I mean, they had to animate Sephira and stuff. Yeah, but uh, oh, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. Sorry, how could well. I forget? Um, and they had Robert Carlyle, Rumpelstiltskin as Derza. Oh my God, Derza! <gasps> Derza scared the or, shit out you know, of me. Uh, Derza, I will. I always. I just pictured him as the guy from the Full Monty. Yeah. And I was like, why have they got a stripper as the shade? Oh my God! Or you know who else? Oh my God! I can't remember his name. He's like my favorite character. Murtag. Murta. Oh my God! My absolute favorite <laughs> character. And I literally had the biggest obsession with Garrett Headland after that because he. I just fancied him so much. I fancied him when I read the books. <laughs> Because he was, and do you know what? I think that's the first time I've ever really like. Because normally, I think it's because he had dark hair. Because mm. normally I'd be simping for like the main character, like Aragon, but like I've always been a simp for yeah. Murta. And he was like mysterious, like broody. And he was, I just love him the best so character. much. He is, yeah. And him and, um, I can't remember anybody's name today. Um, God, it's been so long since we read these books as well. I know, but we're very passionate about it. I know. And what was that? The the other woman, 
her name. She was like at the uh, play. She was like part of the Red Bull. I loved her. I thought because I always shipped her and Mercer together, but I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But they just did her dirty. She was in it for like two seconds when she was like forty. I was like, they're all meant to be the same yeah. age. <laughs> and I feel like they oh they did Sephira dirty as well because Sephira is supposed to be so sarcastic and sassy and. What was she? She was just there. Sephira was like, who? Put, her voice was like someone, like a big actress as well. And I, just, it weirded Ra- me out. Ra- Rachel Weisz. Yeah. yeah, Rachel. Oh my god, because, and like, it weirded me out that her voice was so old because she was so young and that she's meant to be like she's just half. She's supposed she... to be like, oh god. And, like, we are, at some point, we're going to do a big Aragon episode. I think for that, I'll probably try and reread them. Or oh, yeah, we'll have to reread them. them. Um, just so we're more informed. But those books are fantastic. Like, yeah. fantastic. And, if and then the film is just... Horrific. If you, I think it might be one of the worst things I've ever seen, like, adapted. Yeah. <laughs> but if you <laughs> like, speak about it. If you've not read the book because the film was so bad then just read the books because they're so freaking good. Like, yeah. I can't even explain. We had, on Instagram, we had, like, a little thing about how Aragorn was done so dirty. And I had so many people reply, like, oh my god, I never read it because the film was so bad. And I was like, see, this is what happens with bad adaptations. Because oftentimes, if it's, like, a mediocre adaptation, that will get new fans. Yeah. Well, they're actually, I mean, Aragorn, I feel like if I hadn't read the books before and I'd watched it, I would be intrigued enough to read the books. Like, like you Yeah, know. well, when I, I was young when I watched it, um, so I couldn't really appreciate, like, I didn't know that they were that yeah. bad. But, like, primary school I mean, age. When did it come out? I was in, yeah, I was so in year I four, been, so. Oh my god. I was, I don't even know how old I was. Uh, I would have been nine, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was, nine. I was about eight. Uh, yeah, um, and I, so I read the first Aragorn book as a book, and it was very, it took me so long to read, because obviously the language is very complex, um, and then I got the other books as audiobooks for Christmas, so I, they, they were on tape, they weren't even on CDs, they were on tape, Vintage. Um, so, and I rinsed those, I used to have a little Walkman, and I listen to it everywhere I go um so I feel like yeah that'll be my my audible credits will be spent on Aragon books at some point because I need to relive that yeah I definitely need to reread them I just want to go back to Illiglesia and be like oh my God, I want to oh. be a dragon rider and have my own dragon yeah we're we're yeah we're gonna have a bristling yeah podcast and <laughs> um <laughs> that's the best thing ever <laughs> I feel like we need to move on oh, to the God. next horrific... We do, because we've talked too much about Erica. The next horrific adaption, which is... Everyone knows how bad this adaption is. <gasps> Percy Jackson and the Lion and Thief. And Percy Jackson and the oh. Sea of Monsters. Because Not Sea of I Monsters. I didn't know <laughs> that you could go from worse to worse, but apparently you can. And those films are a, a perfect example of this. And now I want to say now... One thing that I appreciate about these films is that I think that Logan Lerman was fantastic. Logan it was a fantastic Lerman. choice for Percy. And if they were going to age him up, which I understand why they did it, I sort of wish they hadn't, but I understand why they aged him up because we all read mm-hmm. the books when we were young. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. wanted to simp for, <laughs> for Percy. <laughs> so I get it. I can appreciate it. I'm not mad. I'm really not mad that they, they aged him up. But I'm mad about every single thing else about this series. I'm mad about oh, Pierce Brosnan my. as Chiron. Excuse me. <laughs> no, Pierce Brosnan. Who did that? I actually oh liked that they made Grover POC, but also it was kind of tokenistic that his best friend was like black and not human. Yeah, black best friend. Yeah. Um, but I thought... But I mean, Grover was a great actor as well. Yeah, I really like... I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy Grover. Gro- Grover's a good... like. He's really funny. <laughs> yeah, I really like Grover. Um, Annabeth, let's not. They couldn't let's. have cast it worse. How? How is that Matthew Dario's sister? How? I know. She does look like him. Yeah, yeah. but like... Alexandra... And then in the second film where they tried to make her like semi-blonde. And they tried to do a 360 on her personality. everyone complained about the first one. Yeah, and then like in the second film she had a 360 on her personality and she was all like bright-eyed yeah. and bucky and nice. And then in the first one she was just horrible. Like she was 
this badass. I don't know. They just didn't get it right. They didn't get the mix because they per, like Annabeth's. She's badass, but she's also sm- like smart. Mm-hmm. She's very Hermione esque in the way she yeah. is. She's not yeah. as much as I can know it all. It's like Hermione. She's not, but she's no, but she's like best of her age at what she does. Yeah, she's badass and stuff. And they did not. Mm. They could not get that balance right with the characterization. It was either yeah. she's a badass warrior who is a bitch, or she's nicey nice blonde. <laughs> girl blonde girl who's there it's like oh my god and they changed the whole plot i know the first so the first book is about them obviously going to rescue percy's mother etc um and then just before they go into the underworld they are given the pearls yeah the film is about them obviously same going to get percy's mother but their quest is to find the pearl yeah and i'm like they were just given to them in the book they they have this whole other adventure anyway so it's like why did you make the whole plot going to find these pearls it was just stupid i'm sorry okay so the only the only bit that i actually really enjoy is you know the bit where they go to the the lotus casino and they're eating the high poker face and... <laughs> poker face she <laughs> and they're eating the lotus flowers i just oh my God. i just wanted <laughs> i just wanted to eat one of them lotus flowers and just feel like they looked so good they were high they looked it's the so fact good. that they were high i know it's so funny i'm sorry that was hilarious and i that actually is it's quite like that they were like promoting being high oh, it's in so a kids funny. film it's so funny i just and like oh. and they've all got the giggles and <laughs> I literally every time i hear poker face i'm like Oh. I'm the same. I do the dance, you know, that Grover does. I'm always like, yes. Poker face. Oh my god, it's so funny. God, that whole bit was amazing. And also, I mean, Uma Thurman as Medusa. I used to date your daddy. That just makes me incredible. I can't over. It. It's so funny. I used to date your dad. <laughs> That's so hilarious. What? What? A, and the fact that he has like, an iPod Touch and he's like an, using it as a mirror. An iPod Touch. I literally, li- I used to have an iPod touch and I used to, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my and god. like, yeah, this, uh, this film has a lot of nostalgia for us, but it's still bad. It's bad. Like, like I can't say it's good. I would, I can't even talk about Sea of Monsters. Oh my god, Sea of Monsters. So I went to see Percy Jackson again in the cinema because we're simps. Um, and I went with like three of my friends at the time. Um... And they hadn't read Percy Jackson, so afterwards they were like, that was so good. And I was like, A, it wasn't. Yeah. Like, just as a film. And B, no. And I got so bad. I know. And, oh. and like, the fact that they, like, we got all the way to the end of the... F- also, the girl... Sorry, the most, the main, like, thing about the, the second film I don't like is, like, C- Clarice. Is that her name? Oh, my God. Clarissa? Yeah. Clarice? She's... They cast her me... so wrong. I thought she was like a bigger, yeah, a bigger girl. Yeah. Maybe like plus size. I think that's how I imagined her. Yeah, like plus size or curvy at yeah, least. Yeah, curvy. But that, and I, I think it was the girl in the Hunger Games that they cast. Was she like Glimmer? Yes, I think she was Glimmer I'm... from the Hunger Games. I, I could be wrong, but yes, I think it was yes, her. she was. She, I think she was. Um, I'm just fact checking. One second. She was terrible. And then, like, the end of the film as well, where we, like, got hinted that we were going to get Talia and, like, the Golden Fleece and all of, like, bought Talia. I was buzzing. I was like, yes! I mean, if we're going to get a third film, it might be bad, but I'm excited to see Talia. And I think they cast her and everything, and then they never made it. And I was like, like, I'm glad, but also, like, no. (laughs) But also, like, why'd you do this to us before we got more? Yeah, and also, another thing was, Actually, I wasn't sure how they were going to do the third film because we never really even went into the fact that, like, Luke, Annabeth and Talia were best friends. Yeah. And especially not in The Lightning Thief. We never got any of that. No, just, literally. It, um, the budget for Sea of Monsters was $90 million. Oh, my God. It was that superimposed yacht that they made that they must have <laughs> busted the whole flipping budget on. Yeah. 
<laughs> all, or, of, all of it on that he's, a cyclops eye. Yeah, his eye. Oh my god, I was literally about to say that. His like superimposed eye. Yeah, so who they cast as Clarice was the girl uh, Glimmer in the Hunger Games. Oh my god. Just Can you just go and check who plays check, uh, so. the cyclops? Well, I can't remember his name. I'm terrible at names today. I'm so sorry, guys. Terrible. Douglas Smith plays Tyson. Tyson, and he, he's in something. He's been cast in something recently because I've watched it. Uh, he is in... Uh, Big Little Lies. Oh my god, it's just loading. High quality podcasts we have here. I know. But he, he they were just, oh my god. I don't yeah, know why. Like... Tyson, Tyson annoyed me in the books. And I think that was because Percy felt some sort of way about him. So I automatically was on, because I just love Percy. I yeah, just, well, because you're going adore from Percy. The, the point of view of Percy. Yeah, I think I just, like, he got my heckles up because, like, Percy didn't like him, so I just didn't like him. Um, but I really hated him in that film. I was like, you are terrible, and you, you're weirding me out with that weird eye. God, he's in loads of stuff. He's in X-Files, um, The Alienist. Oh, The Alienist. Maybe that was it. Oh, I love The Alienist. That's such a good series. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, oh, that... <sighs> And then when they go to, like, Cersei's Isle. Is it Cersei's Isle they go to? Or is it... Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I don't remember. <laughs> I really... And you haven't read Percy Jackson in years. And I, I, I don't watch that. I especially don't watch the second film. If I'm going to watch any of them, I watch the first one. But I don't watch it the second one. It killed me off they put... And they put Sea of Monsters on Disney Plus for Rick Riordan's birthday. And he was like, this isn't what I want. <laughs> He's like, don't... <laughs> That film is like, terrible. No. Take it off. Oh my god. Um, I can't talk I, about I mean, it any longer. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to see what they do with the TV show, but... Oh my god, yeah. I, I, I feel a bit heartbroken that I'm not going to be able to simp for Percy. Because <laughs> like, yeah, they're not ageing them up. They're keeping them I as know, like, kids. They're keeping him 11. Like... So it's going to hurt me. Because <laughs> I love Percy. I'm sorry, Percy was one of the first loves of my entire life. And I'm just all of him now. Yeah. Do mm. you know when I, when I read... Heroes of Olympus as well. Heroes of Olympus. When I opened it and I saw Jason and I thought, this is not what I signed up for. I signed up for Percy. <laughs> but it hurt me and I was glad that I could I was, I was, could still be in love with him because... And there's yeah, like a and part, he's older. Yeah, and there's a part and he's like talking about his future with Annabeth and it just... Oh. It literally hurt. It like kills me. But I do love him and I'm, I'm sad that I'm not going to be able to simp because that will be horrible. I can't simp for an 11 yeah. year old, obviously. Why would I? It's terrible. Yeah, no, exactly. But... but... If it goes well, they might do Heroes of Olympus. Yeah, I'll still be too old. I'm 22 yeah, now, so I can't. But if we were, if they were aging them up to 16 and casting 23 year olds, then yeah, it would have been fine. Yeah, but they're not going to, no. so I can't. I still. But I'm excited. I, on Twitter, there was a whole thing about because obviously Logan Lerman was like perfect as Percy, and he loves the books as well. He's really passionate. Everyone was like, cast Logan Lerman as, as Poseidon. Um, Poseidon. Imagine. I would die, pass out, I'd be watching that every single I'd day. I'd be simping for Poseidon. I'd be, I'd be like, simping yes. for Poseidon. I would literally be dying. Oh. If they put Logan, Logan Lerman in it. Oh, ah! Logan Lerman is incredible anyway. But yeah. yeah. I can't talk oh about we... Percy Jackson anymore. It infuriates <laughs> me. I can't. It's terrible. We, we started with three strong ones and we have been talking for a while. So we might have to almost yeah. speed run through the rest of our bad films list. Because Next. there are a lot. And we don't want this podcast to be 12 hours long. I think we can skip through most of these. But next, Spiderwick. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, not it. Um, we'll move on. Holly Black. <laughs> they did you dirty. I, the, the twins being, like, photoshopped. And the one actor playing the twins was terrible. You should have just oh cast twins. Oh, my God. It was oh, painful. That would actually make a really good TV show. Netflix. Hi. Yeah, um, the, um, the animation on that was okay. I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay production value. Just they just didn't. They it was just, just rubbish. I don't know. We we we. It's not. It's a no from us. Yeah. Artemis um, File. Artemis I haven't File. read it. <laughs> I've not read it or watched it, so I don't know. I was fuming. I have never been more. This is also up there with like my worst adaptations because I loved Artemis Fowl growing up. Danny, you should read them because they are great. They were one of the first books to combo fantasy with science so they have like a centaur who's uh the head of the tech department and the the whole name leprechaun is changed to lep recon oh. so they're like fairy police oh that's cool 
It's really cool. And then Artemis is, um, he's a main character, but you don't like him because he's a supervillain. Oh, okay. And he's trying to exploit the fairies out of their gold, basically. Right, okay. Um, and then the other main character is Holly, who's um, the first female LEP officer. Um, so she's like, women's rights, I'm going to do the damn thing. And then her and Artemis go head to head and it's really good. No. The film oh. opens with Artemis Fowl surfing. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. He's in like Nikes the whole time. Oh my god. And he's he like is like we and then his butler there's a character who's literally called Butler. Um they made him black, which he wasn't black. Oh Jesus, okay. Um and then changed his name because they were like, Oh, we couldn't have a black character called Butler. Slave? And I'm like, Well he was <laughs> yeah, literally And I was like, Well he wasn't black, he was like Russian. Let me look at what name it was because so they made oh the, my! They made the the butler black and then um, thought well, that's racist. Actually, let's change the name instead of not casting a black person yeah. in it. Oh my god! And like there are so many other opportunities. Like they Foley, who is the centaur, who is like r- such a cool character. I read as black, but no, they yeah. cast some other like. And then and they is changed. This a film or is it the this, TV show? It's a film. It's a Disney Plus film. Oh, it's a film. Um, okay. Um, oh my god, what did they change his name to? S L A V E. Um. Yeah, and they changed Julius Root, who is the like the the head of the police, to Julia Root, to try and be more like ooh. But then that literally got rid of Holly's whole storyline because she's no longer the first female officer. Because her commanding officer is female. This sounds like a oh train wreck. So, uh, and oh my god, it was like, and then the C- the CG was bad. The whole thing was bad. And in the the book, Artemis's main mission is to get his dad back because his dad was also a supervillain who disappeared. Okay. Yeah. In the film, his dad loves fairies and taught him all about fairies. And then dies. Right, cool. I mean, it sounds like it's no from me. So I completely understand. <laughs> oh my god, they changed his name to Dom. They changed Butler's name to Dom and Just made Dom. him black. Yeah. Right, Dom. Okay. It's, oh, uh, yeah, I was very mad. And Artemis Fowl as a book series, if you haven't read them, are so well done because it's that kind of anti hero thing. Yeah. Um, Enemies to Lovers as well. Ooh. Um, it's great. It, it is fantastic. Oh, and they had Josh Gad as Mulch Diggins. Anyway, okay, we, we'll move on because I could, <laughs> I could go on forever. So, about in this. conclusion, no for Artemis Fowl. So, yeah. But yes to the books. So, <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> to the books. They are so good. And they're a really now, quick read as well. Next one on the list oh. is Inkheart. See, I went to see Inkheart in the cinema. I don't remember anything about it, but I think is the guy that from the Mummy in it. Yes, he is terrible. He's the the, I didn't. I didn't. It's so, I like the I don't think I read the book. I I read the first two. I still need to read the last one. The books are really good. They're really well written. Such a great concept. Film? No. It's yeah. Well, I watched the film and was like, okay. It was terrible. I can't even, like, what? What? Yeah, it it doesn't even need to... Yeah, we'll we'll move on. If you've read Inkheart and you've not watched the film, we don't recommend it. As a person who's not read the book, I didn't like the film anyway, and Deadly's done both and she didn't like it, so... Yeah, the book is much better, um, as as it always is, but... Now, the next one on the list is... A sore spot for me, and it's it's Divergent. So I think I've seen on TikTok going around at the minute that Divergent was the death of dystopian, the dystopian True. era. It murdered the dystopian area, area, era. era. Um, and I agree because I don't think I ever picked up another dystopian book after I finished Divergent series, and that that's no. as soon as I finished Allegiant, that was it. I'm done. I was like, I'm done. This 
this book was shit. True. I'm not reading anymore. Like, I don't think you can go... I, there's only so far you can go with dystopian, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I didn't... Yeah. The, but yeah, these the books films... killed it. Oh, my God. And the film, the books were bad, and then the films were worse. I liked... So I like the first book divergent book and mm-hmm. i didn't hate the second book and i hated the third one the third one was one of the worst things i've ever read in my entire life <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not really even that sorry it was terrible the films were worse wow i don't i didn't watch the second film or the third film but i know for a fact oh. <laughs> that they changed the whole plot of the last one yeah mm-hmm. up until a point where i thought no i don't think i'm gonna bother and i've never it's, watched them it's really not worth it um, I went to the cinema for all of them because, again, oh. I, I went to the cinema uh, to watch the first one, but none of the rest. I was like, I'm not going to watch anymore. Well, I have a friend who really loves Four or Tobias, um, so I was dragged. Christ. Dragged. Um, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, they completely changed the plot of the whole last book slash film. Uh, characters that should have died didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, was obsessed. I was obsessed with Will when I read the book. I really loved Will. Mm. Um, and I thought, you couldn't save Will. But you could save everyone else. Mm. And Literally. fucking Uriah. I loved oh Uriah. God. Wait, I'm sorry. Sort of a spoiler. I'm so- if you've not read Divergent, I don't recommend Skip it now. Like but when Uriah dies, does he die in the film? I'm pretty sure. God, I have Again, I haven't watched films in so long. Oh my gosh, uh, as if they killed Uriah but not Triss. I would sue. I think, I'm pretty sure Triss is the only one who doesn't. You're kidding! That's racist. Uriah's like, <laughs> only, oh. it, he's black, he's black in the films, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fucking, wow. Should have known then. Oh, like, the book, I, again, I loved the first book like you did. I thought it was really good. I thought the whole, like, training thing was scary the whole it was just great but then it and i also think it was too close to the time of hunger games but that's obviously why it came out but like yeah they they went through the the phase didn't they of everything yeah maze runner yeah it was all the same kind of genre but like hunger games when it was done so well i think everything's held to that standard um as it should be because that's what everyone's copying uh and it just didn't. It was just. Yeah, I'm not really sure that Shailene Woodley was the correct choice for Triss. I don't. No. I don't know if. Did you see the Barbies was... they did for it? <laughs> they did yeah. Divergent Barbies, and they are scary. Like Jesus. they come up all the time on eBay, and I'm like, "Oop, Divergent, hi." <laughs> Something else. Some like that was a phase when everyone was um. Ca- Shailene Woodley was cast in everything. Um, mm-hmm. What's his name? The guy that was in the Fault in Our Stars, Ansel Elgort. Oh, Ansel Elgort. Yeah, yeah. He he was in it, and then so was. Um, oh, I've just said his name in my head now. I can't bloody remember it. Miles Teller. Oh, it came out in twenty fourteen. Miles Teller. Yeah. Miles Teller was in it, and I think like it was mm. like a time where they were just like the big shots in everything. Shailene mm-hmm. and. Shailene and Ansel were in um, The Fault in Our Stars and then Miles was in something with Shailene and it was like all of those three were just the it they were the it stars um, and I just think mm. it was just terrible the whole book the film was terrible the films were awful I never watched it I remember watching this in the cinema and thought I think I'm going to give up I think I'm giving up on these adaptions <laughs> made the because right decision they were terrible Divergent I isn't wish. the best book series in the world but it, it was better than it, that It's film. enjoyable enough. Like, it, it's classic. Although, again, it, it did... I didn't think I've picked up a, a dystopian novel since as well. I didn't think I've been, like, drawn to any, really. The closest I ever... I, I read The Red Queen, and that's technically fantasy, but that's... I think that's dystopian. And I couldn't read yeah. that. I didn't. I don't like. So I'm going to put this now. So this is public public knowledge. I hate the Red Queen with a burning passion. I really <laughs> do not enjoy those books. But it. I think half the reason I don't enjoy it. No, I know the full reason why I don't enjoy it is because the protagonist. But 
most of the reason I don't is because it's it kind of gives me dystopian vibes. Even yeah. though it is technically fantasy, it is it's like futuristic. It's it's not for me. No. And I think it was Divergent's fault that I don't <laughs> like it anymore because I was obsessed with the Hunger Games. I mean, and then they're... and the Maze Runner was fine, but I yeah. think that the Divergent would just ruined it. Yeah, I just I fucking hate it. I just hate the dystopian novels now. I will never bring up. I'll never read dystopian again. I remember having to study like Clockwork Orange at school and was like, mm. a because Clockwork Orange is nearly unreadable. I don't care what anybody says; it's not fun <laughs> to read. And B, because I was like, oh, great, dystopian. Or dystopia. I just yeah. like, I just like a little bit of hope. Like, I feel like we know with fantasy, <laughs> we're going to get hurt on the way, but it's, we're going to have mm. a happy ending. And I feel like we mm-hmm. don't get that with, I've never read no, a dystopian like, the novel. the world's over thought, anyway. Yeah. yeah, the world's over. You get to the end and the world just ends. That's yeah. pretty much what happens. Like, and everything, the Hunger Games. Yeah. It's not a good ending empty. to that. Yeah, you just feel empty at the end. You're like, oh, tragedy. Now they're all living a tragic life where they've had to deal yeah. with PTSD and stuff. But like in yeah, fantasy, just... you get a little bit of, we've worked all the way and well, this is what we wanted and this is the outcome what we've got. But they were just in dystopian. It's like we're, we're working to survive. And I feel like that's what happened in Divergent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like, what do they do after the end of. <laughs> Nothing. They can't. I don't the world care is in either. Ruins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Rebuild the world. Have fun. But you can't, you can't take? rebuild the world because it's completely a wasteland. So like, exactly. they just have to stay in that little army base. Yeah, they get to go down a zip wire and scatter some ashes. But <laughs> how fun! <laughs> Why that's was that work? Oh, I just hate oh my book. God. It's... Allegiant is one of the worst things that's ever been made. Anyway, moving swiftly onwards because yeah. I can't talk about how much I hate Divergent any longer. <laughs> Beautiful creatures. Now. If I'm being honest, Deadly, you've seen the film, haven't you? Yes, I haven't read the book, but I've seen the film. I've read the books and I've watched the film. The books weren't fantastic. I'm going to hold my hands up now and say Mm -hmm. the books weren't phenomenal. They were entertaining, but they weren't Mm -hmm. phenomenal. They're a bit different. If you fancy something that's about witches and magic, that's slightly... It's set in the deep south... It's like just a bit different. It isn't. It is quite a fun. It's like a nice, entertaining book to read, and it's from a like a ma- man's point of view. It's written by two women, mm. and it's from a, like Ethan. It's from Ethan's point of view about Lena, yeah. and him and Lena's. Now I'm being honest. Now I think it's based on something. It's like a retelling of something, and I uh, want to say okay. I want to say Romeo and Juliet, but I could be wrong because he's. I think I feel like it might be Romeo and Juliet that this book's based on. I I really okay. could be wrong though. Mm-hmm. It's definitely based on something. I can't remember. That's just come to me. But it's quite it's quite good in that way. The film they just need to stop. This is just what they need to stop doing. <laughs> they need to stop casting two actors that are very high budget and yeah. then fucking the rest of the plot off and the rest of the film for, for those two actors. Like... Because Jeremy Irons was in it again. Yeah. Jeremy Irons was in it. He was Lena's Da, uncle. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then thingy, the woman, Emma. Yeah. I'm, what I'm was her name? Like... <laughs> I do know her name. She's a freaking massive actor. She's Oscar Viola Davis. Yes. Yeah. yeah then, yes. Oh yeah. So let's let's get. I know. Let's get Viola Davis, Jeremy Irons in. Let's blow the rest of the budget on everything else because it's gonna be crap. If I was going to pick any book to adapt, I don't think I would have picked Beautiful Creatures, if I'm being honest. Fair. Yeah, I think it, the problem was that they probably shouldn't have just made the film, to be honest. The books aren't that great. I went Emma Thompson as in it, too. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that's three actors. And then the girl from Shameless. What's her name? Ridley. She played Ridley. Uh, Emmy. Emmy Rossum. Emmy Rosum. Yeah, she was in it as well. And to be fair, I did quite like her as, as uh, Ridley. But... The problem is, the books just the yeah, books weren't good. Just, that's and that's yeah. the thing. The books I didn't finish. I think I didn't read the last one. If Unless this it, material isn't great, then the film yeah. has no hope. Like, they were okay. They were okay to read. They were quite an entertaining read. But this is like how much I I didn't love the books. Is that the third one ended on a cliffhanger, and I had no desire to find out what happened in the last one. Yeah, and that's. Oh. An, and that's how you know it's not that amazing. And I didn't hate it, but it wasn't mm. that good. So I don't think that... I think we were always going to struggle from the get-go to get three, four films from that. Yeah. Because it just wasn't that good. And they somehow made it worse in the film. 
<laughs> I feel like the guy that played Ethan was cast quite well. He was sweet. He's a bit of a himbo because Ethan is a himbo. Yeah. And yeah, the dynamic, it, it was like, oh, I'm a jock, popular jock, and I'm a weirdo. It was a bit of a Twilight very, dyma- dynamic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it's just... very that kind of Tumblr yeah. romance. Yeah, but... it was Wattpad romance. <laughs> yeah. It was just, yeah, it just wasn't that good. I I don't, I think, that's, yeah, I think that's another thing. I can't entirely blame the people that made the yeah. film mm-hmm. because the book wasn't that good either. But, yeah, I would watch, sit and watch Beautiful Creatures if I had to. I, I, I mean, off. visually, I like the the some of the costumes were beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think because I had read the books, I don't really have a. I can't really criticize. Or I wouldn't even recommend I, the books. Yeah, I wouldn't okay, recommend. Well, I'm not going to read the books because they're better. Or I just don't think I'd yeah. think them are good. Cool. <laughs> moving on, moving on to the next <laughs> one. We're going on to vampires, and we're going to start with Vampire Academy now. I have a confession to make <laughs> i love the books vampire academy if you haven't read the vampire academy books and you like vampires what are you doing read the vampire academy jesus christ they are fantastic the books are phenomenal they're fantastic rose is the one of the best protagonists of ever do you know what rose gives me alien vibes her oh. and alien are very similar and I just love her, and I, you know what, I I, I, re- I watched the film first, I literally only read Vampire Academy last year, but I, I, I watched the, the film first, and I thought, this is terrible, and then I was, I already had the books, so I thought one day I'll just, I'll just read it, and I picked up, and I thought, Jesus, they've really done them dirty, but the girl that they cast as Rose, I don't think that they could have cast her any better. I think she played Rose really well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think if it, the script was better and yeah. the costumes and everything Same. were better, then she would have been fantastic. Mm-hmm. The guy that played Dimitri, Jesus, I... <laughs> he was so old. <laughs> For what? Why did they make him so old? He was so <laughs> old. Dimitri was meant to be like 24. He looked about 35. Yeah, like... He looked terrible. Have you seen the film, Deadly? Yeah, ages yeah. ago. I, okay. I can barely... It's not good. Is, is it Dom in it? Yeah. Yeah, Dom's <laughs> in it as well. Dom Sherwood. Yeah, he's in it. It's just crap. They just tried to make like a teen, <laughs> teen rom-com. Well, yeah, it's that... It was... Because it was definitely after Twilight, right? It was kind of trying to capitalise on that. Oh, God, yeah, it was after Twilight. Yeah. It was they trying to capitalise on that, that There's nothing like vampire Twilight. sizzle. Yeah, but the Vampire Academy is nothing like Twilight. No, but they, they just see the vampire word and they're like... Yeah. And make money. If anything, it's a bit more like Harry Potter. Okay. That they're at school. Yeah, I guess, because Academy. Yeah, that yeah. Goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this, I just love those books in the film. Like they, it's like there's this there's this like line in it in the film and like me and my friend Hope, we just sometimes we don't even talk. I just we just message each other this this quote from the film, but it's like <laughs> so like the whole way through the books it's like a running th- and the film no not really they, they mention it once in the film but the whole way through the books every, like Dimitri. He's like a really powerful vampire slayer, and everyone refers to him as being a god. Like he's a god. Like he's that powerful. Like he's that good at his job. And um, one of the characters, like from one of the side characters, like I can't remember who it's meant to be, but he like is like loading up his like gun, and he's there's like a bit at the end of the film where they're like the evil people are like sort of like going against the good people. And it like, pans to the evil group and he's like loading his gun. He's like, and he's like putting his like knives in his pockets and stuff. And he's going, Dimitri may be God, but, I, but I'm an atheist. An atheist with a big gun. And he like cocks the gun and like goes off to like get Dimitri. Oh my God. Who, whoever wrote that script needed slapping for that. Like, oh Dimitri God. may be a God, but I'm an atheist. An atheist with a big gun and he's like scottish and he's just like got coxes goes and he like walks out and i was just like what the literal hell that's so funny i was literally sat there going what is we doing watching this it was terrible 
Oh my god. I'm an atheist <laughs> with a big gun. I'm gonna get that tattooed on my ass. I'm an atheist <laughs> with a big gun. <laughs> oh my god. An atheist, my neighbor's gonna be like, an atheist with on? a big gun. Oh my god. And then like <sighs> I think Rose says sweet sassy molassy at one point. And I, Rose would never she goes, sweet <sighs> sassy molassy. And I'm like, excuse me? What? The characterization. And they're like they they call it the, it's like blood whores and well, I think that is in the book, but there's oh like god. a oh it just Okay, there's like cringe sayings that they say because they try to make it relatable to like teens. Yeah, they tried to like make it teen. Oh also. my god, it was just awful. So if you like like watching stuff like that. And it had the music in like, live fast, die young, bad girls, do it right. And I oh was like, god. Jesus. That dates it was it as just, well. Yeah, it does date it. It's just terrible. Like the film is terrible. <laughs> the the atheist with a big gun. The atheist with a big gun has killed me. It's that awful. laugh is, has literally peaked my audio. I know, so mine's much. right at the top of the That's going to burst your eardrums <laughs> when you're doing that. But, oh my God. The Rip film. Editing. If you, but if you watch the film and you hated it, please just read the books. The books are fantastic, I promise. But the film, I agree, is awful. Okay, so th- so Vampire Academy is your Artemis Fowl. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, and like my our friend Beth, she like agrees. She hates it. And the the girls are wearing like mini skirts. And like Rose is meant to be like an assassin, and she's meant to be like ready to fight, but she's wearing heels and a mini skirt. Oh my god! It's just no. the cost. Like everything's terrible, and they just no, it's, it's they try to make it like funny, like satire. Oh, it's just terrible. Like the film is awful. But read the book, I promise. It's so good. You'll just yeah. love it. You'll fall in love with Dimitri, but yeah, he's not old. Well, he's old, but he's not that old. <laughs> I mean, speaking of vampires, I'm just going to go on next. I mean, Twilight isn't a bad adaptation. It's just Twilight in itself is bad. Twilight in itself is bad. I'm glad. I'll, you know what? I'll give Twilight's dues. They needed to take out all the Mormon coded shit in that book because oh Jesus. Like, Edward being in love with Bella and her beige ankle length skirt and stuff would not have translated well to TV, to like film and it would not have been relatable. So I'm glad that they took all of that shit out. Have but... you seen? There's this woman on TikTok and she's like, she puts together like Google images of what their outfits would have been from the book. I have, yeah, I've seen and it. Edward's outfit in the meadow that he was so nervous about is a sleeveless white shirt that he wears completely unbuttoned. So it's a white vest that he wears unbuttoned and like <laughs> boot cut jeans. Shut up. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll have to find the video and send it to you. Shirt. A yeah. sleeveless white shirt. Like, literally sleeveless like a vest and he f- is fully unbuttoned to go meet Bella for a picnic. I'm sorry. I can I can't really like we all went through a twilight phase, but what the hell were we doing? We were re- reading that going, "Oh, I want a boyfriend like that." No, we didn't want a boyfriend like that. No, he stupid. was like watching her sleep. When she wanted to go visit Jacob, he took the engine out of her car. Like that's the thing. The thing is like me and our friend like Hannah, she's a massive Twilight fan, but she always has been and like I I'm going to put my hands up here. I'm going to admit the fact that I was kind of team Jacob when I was younger, but not because I actually liked Jacob, but because Taylor Lautner was so <laughs> was so hot. <laughs> and he was just my type, like all over six pack, like ta- like dark hair, like mm-hmm. like darker skin. Um, even though I found out he was white recently, but go off. Anyway, he, yeah, I know. I know. He wasn't actually Native American. I don't think <gasps> any of them were really Native American. I, that could be a lie, but I think I don't think that they cast Native Americans. Oh my god. Because it Shit. came out that like Stephanie May was like racist. Oh yeah, racist AF, yeah. Yeah. Because Cause she wouldn't she... let them cast Alice as Asian as well. They wouldn't let her, and she said she'd never cast a black person as anything but a villain. And I was like, okay. Ooh. Great, love that. Okay, um, thank you for that, Stephanie. You Lebron. dick. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only yeah. black person in it. In it, is um, a villain with dreads. <laughs> oh, fuck. What the fuck? Twilight is terrible. Anyway, 
this is why it's in the bad section. Um, but <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. But um, I can't remember what I was saying now. <laughs> you were saying that you were Team Jacob. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, I was Team Jacob, but like not actually because I not because I wanted him to be with Bella, <laughs> or because I thought he was a oh, nice god. person purely because he was hot. Bella, yeah. where the hell have you been, Loka? <laughs> oh my god, cured my depression. My crops you... are watered. Wait, what are we saying? Because <laughs> sorry, the fly just flew in my face. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I just like <laughs> it's on my screen. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Can you like chase out the window? <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> this is where we should be filming. I know, yeah, we should have filmed it. We should be filming it. Um, <laughs> so funny. Also, yeah, just guys, let us know how you'd feel about us filming episodes so we have like actual yeah. footage to put on YouTube because that's something we're considering. Definitely. Um, I was Team Jasper, but now I'm like. Jesus! It gets worse! <laughs> Yeah, because I loved him, and now I'm like, but he was like a, a soldier oh, he's racist. in the Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, no, we do not simp anymore. But like, because obviously team, I was like, I'm Leah. a team Jacob. <laughs> team Alice. Oh yeah, Leah though. But like, team Alice like, dated him. <laughs> yeah, Team Rosalie. Yeah. I want to like steal the wedding I, like, dress I really and kill like... the guy that fucked me over. I really love Rosalie. Anyway, sorry, yeah, um... <laughs> we got twilight in this section when they have masterpieces like you knew my daughter after the loch ness monster <laughs> and um yeah. obviously uh how you lacking the rain girl and green <laughs> green is good what even is la push baby like- la push and the cl- I still can't get over how the clothing is described. I remember the amount of detail she goes in for her friends trying on like prom dresses and all about this one dress with spaghetti straps. And I was like, stop. Spaghetti straps. I don't want to like, know about the. It's like a Wattpad <sighs> fan fiction where it's like, I wore black tights with a, with a mini skirt and my hair in a side part and black converse that went exactly two inches above my ankle and all of like do you know when like they go into completely bright red lipstick smeared across my lips with smudged black eyeliner around my eyes and you're thinking christ with not three like paragraphs into the description yeah, yeah literally oh my god and like fish, yeah as you say bella's gloves. like <laughs> which one and when <laughs> when they're like oh edward this girl you like is called bella gotta cook italian <laughs> Gee, ah, why did they think that she was Italian? I'm sorry. And then, like, Rosalie smashes the salad on the floor in a tantrum. I was going, okay. okay. My God. And yeah, Bella's outfit of, like, an ankle-length brown skirt and, like, an aubergine blouse. And Edward's like, oof. You're really doing it for me, girl. Thank you. Yes, so, um, Twilight, definitely bad. They weren't yeah. good. They're good for oh. nostalgic purposes, I guess, and we'll, we'll watch them. Why but, did I yeah. go to the midnight premieres? I went to every why, single midnight premiere. Why did I also go to the midnight premiere and also go to see Eclipse early on Bella's birthday? Oh my god. <laughs> Do you know my, my favourite memory is, you know, in New Moon when Jacob takes off his top. And everyone screamed. Everyone screamed. And this Same woman happened behind to me. me, woman behind me who must have been about 45, went, Good boy! <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no! Literally, and I literally... I feel like you guys have not lived unless you've been to, like, a midnight showing of, like, Twilight because I went to New Moon as well and, like, Jacob comes in topless and he's ripped and everyone was like... Aah! Everyone, like, screamed and clapped. Yeah. And then, like, Peter... Uh, Peter? <laughs> well, Edward... <laughs> Peter! <laughs> and then Edward... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Edward came on the screen and everyone was like, yes! <laughs> Peter. Well, honestly, those were the best times though. That's why I love it. For those memories. Yeah. Oh. 
That's why I went, <laughs> I, when I went to see I went to see Breaking Dawn Part One as well, and everyone was crying during the wedding. One girl cried so much she threw up. Ooh. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I didn't like, quite have that reaction, but <laughs> and her friend was like, "You've ruined Edward and Bella's wedding." <laughs> you know what's really funny? Like talking about funny cinema experiences. When I went to see Catching Fire, I had my popcorn in my hand, um, in front of me on my lap, and I have a. a, a why would anybody know this? I don't even know if you know this, Deadly, but I have a phobia of apes. Like, specifically, oh like, chimpanzees and anything of that family. Oh, shit, catching fire. I have a, yeah, I have a major, like, phobia of it. It wasn't too bad about... I didn't like it when I was reading it, but it wasn't too bad, but mm. I was always dreading them making that film. Mm-hmm. And then, so I sat there, and you know the bit, like, in the clock where they yep. get to the bit where all the monkeys are sat there, and there's that bit where they all go... Rrr! When it gets to that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally threw my popcorn up in the air it literally rained down on me went all over the like literally went like that all over the people behind me no. i was like oh my god none of my friends realized what had happened but then i was like too scared to turn around because i definitely covered the people behind us in popcorn like it and so oh i was there like oh my god oh my god so i was like sinking down in my seat and then at the end of the film i got up and i looked around the whole row was covered in it because I'd thrown it because I was terrified. It literally scared the shit out of no. me. I, I know. Mean, every Hunger Games film had a jump. I had a similar. I, I like went oh in the first one when the mutts come out, um, and then there's obviously the monkeys, which I think I still stand by. The monkeys are the scariest part in all of the Hunger Games. Yeah, I agree. Well, I don't like them anyway, so imagine that on crack for me. But it was horrible. Yeah, I remember literally threw it. Yeah. I think that's a good segue onto good film adaptions. Yeah. The Hunger segue. Games is on top of our list. And specifically oh, for me, Catch and Fire. Catch and Fire. You can't touch it. It's is perfect. A, is the best film to, like, book to, like, mm. film adaption that I've ever film seen. adaptation. Yeah, completely. Cast. Oh my god. Oh my god. god. Finnick Joanna. O'Dare. Do we want Finnick. to go Finnick? Oh my god, Joanna. Honestly, <sighs> Finnick. I'm so I was in love with Finnick. Obviously, still am. I'm still Finnick Stan. Yeah. But when they cast Sam Claflin, I was like, Jesus. Well done. Well done. Well done, <laughs> casting, because that was perfect. He was absolutely stunning. I was swooning. I still swoon to this day every time I watch the games. I'm like, you perfect. Don't think. Oh when he God. offered me a sugar Everything, cube, yeah, the sugar cube. How could I sugar say no? Cube. No. Sugar cube. And like fancy sugar the cube. Joanna lift scene is one of my favorite things in the whole world. With Jennifer Lawrence when she's like up against the wall while she's stripping and she's like that face. Oh my God, that is the best thing. And yeah, Joanna was perfect. Like the the actress who had like. The perfect amount of rage and Mags was perfect. Every yeah, like everyone, everyone. the whole thing. The, the only the only gripe I've ever had with the Hunger Games is that they cast Josh Hutcherson as Peter because I don't think he was good. I don't think he was the best one no. as Peter. I don't think he was the best choice for Peter. No, if someone turned around and asked me who I would have cast for Peter, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But Peter was meant to be like tall and big like, and stocky. strong and yeah stocky and like Josh Hutchinson is not that but I don't think he did a bad job no No, but it just wasn't how I pictured Peter because he was supposed to be like what the baker's son so like yeah big yeah yeah like well fed supposed to be able to like punt bags of flour and stuff exactly like yeah he's supposed to be able to like yeah and like yeah the whole thing and then um I mean, Effie was the perfect casting. Elizabeth Banks. Perfect. I think is... that Haymitch was really well cast as well, to be honest. Oh my god, yes. Completely. <laughs> Even though he's like, a bit of a dick. Oh, the but... whole cast. Yeah, but that's, I mean, it works. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, all the Hunger Games films I was really happy with. I even liked that they changed the last book to include Effie, because I think without her, that film would have been really depressing yes um i really liked yeah. lenny kravitz as Senna as well oh my god he was perfect. Sinner. yeah that's the only thing i i missed the glam squad with like octavia and all my little my little cuties that yeah like the blue skin and the crazy hair but other than yeah. that like 
I love Tangit Games. Yeah, I think it's just really well done. I think and all of them are. I don't think the last the, one I needed mean, to be two parts. That's criticism no, I'll give it. We it didn't. didn't need two. But you had and to get on also, the, the money hype. But I, um, I'm not obsessed with the girl on fire outfit. Because I feel like oh. it could have been way more. No, I agree. And Vogue did a piece at the time. Because loads of designers had read The Hunger Games and loved it. Yeah. And they'd all sent sketches in to the costume team of the fire outfit. So they had sketches from, like, massive designers with these huge cloaks of fire and, like, loads of cool stuff. And then they just put them in bondage wear and set their shoulders on fire. And I was like, oh, okay. I hated the, the transformation dress as well. I don't oh like my god, that. the spinny one. Because that was supposed to be all made of, like, jewels. So it looked like flames as she walked. And then when it spinning, it was supposed to be, like, flames. Oh. Yeah, the first like... film wasn't math like the costumes were okay they weren't i mean i still love them and everything effie wears is perfection but then the second film they um most of the films are like catching fire most of the costumes are alexander mcqueen so yeah it's like incredible but it's I feel all, like, like ready to wear that's like the first that's the thing about the first one that i could never get that they never missed with effie but everyone else just fell short like i really yeah. liked that the, the the like arena out like the cost the suits that they all wore yes. in the arenas i thought they were really cool and they were like mm-hmm. futuristic and then like the outfits they were all wearing for like the interviews and stuff i was like gross literally <laughs> forever you've got that from like top shop yeah and then with effie you have like that gorgeous purple brocade that she wears yeah. or like and there's i'm like how how did the same costume department i know and like but for like props and weapons and stuff i thought that the weapons were all spot on i think I was a bit not... I didn't imagine the cornucopia to be like what oh, it yeah. was, but it was I so modern didn't hate odd. it. No, I, I didn't yeah. hate it. And I think I it, it's aged well with the film. I imagined it more like a traditional cornucopia. I did too, um, but like I guess that was obviously what they went for. It made, more, it made sense. Yeah. But I think um, other than that, I think, did we need such a violent death, Finnick? We already read it once. <laughs> we already were traumatised. <laughs> It was violent and horrible, but I kind of would have it liked it a little so bit nicer. Bad. It would have been nicer. I would have like a night of death, not a more horrible one, but go <laughs> off. It was so um, bad. Although we got the beautiful wedding, which makes me cry every time. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I I yeah, so the games. I love the Hunger Games. I just, I just, I remember, I remember going to see Catching Fire and being blown away by how good it was. And I still watch it today and think this film is, this film is perfect. I love it for an adaption anyway. You can't have everything spot on, can you? You're not going to get every single thing no, spot on. I mean, nothing will ever translate a hundred percent from books anyway. Yeah. Um, but that was probably the closest we'll ever get. <laughs> yeah, Catching Fire. Well, we don't know. We could get. I'm holding my hope. I'm holding my hopes out for Shadow and Bone. So hopefully. Oh, that looks good. It does look good. Yes. Um. Another one that okay. we wanted to talk about, obviously, like a classic. It's like the Lord of the Ring. The Lord of the Rings. We know this isn't YA. We no, know, but but it's kind of it's like, like the standard of... of like yeah books to movie adaptation because it is done so well. Yeah, in our in our opinion, anyway, we know there's a lot of people that don't agree. We know, we know. I know, but the books we, are. I know we'll probably are... lose nerd points, but the books are painful <laughs> to read. They're so no, slow. I don't think we are gonna. I don't think we are gonna lose nerd points because I'm. I was playing D and D the other day with my D and D group, which is all men. It's three men. I'm the only girl, mm-hmm. and they always sit there and absolutely slag off Harry Potter, like. But not for the reasons that it should be sagged off for. Like it's not because of like Joanne being horrible, but like mm. just the way it is, because they're such like edge lord, mm-hmm. like nerds that like men. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like nerdy yeah, yeah. men who play D and D. They're just <laughs> the typical like. Sorry, I'm second D and D group. If you're listening to my podcast, which they won't, because they're just not interested in this <laughs> at all. But don't kill me. Don't leave me to die in the next campaign. Uh, but they they were literally were like going, "Oh, put shit, the the world shit," and something that I was like, "No, it's entertaining, guys. It's it's the fantasy without all the boring bullshit that mm-hmm. the fantasy has. Like, you don't need to be pretentious to be fantasy. You don't need to, yeah. it just needs to be entertaining. Mm-hmm. And I can't deny that." 
she did a really fantastic job at the well bidding in Harry Potter. If you, you can't deny that. Really? Absolutely. She, it's so good. So I refuse to take any slander of that. And I know the reason they say it is because it's girls like it and that that's why they, yeah. they don't yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah. But they're always like arse like in the Lord of the Rings for like that sort of thing. And I'm like, the Lord of the Ring books are, are unreadable. Near on unreadable mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. I didn't enjoy any of them. I pushed myself through the first one and I didn't read any more because I couldn't, mm-hmm. because it was that unreadable. The Hobbit was really good, but that's a children's yeah, book. Yeah, That's a children's exactly. book, so it makes it bearable. But the, the Lord of the Rings films made the made it enjoyable. Sorry. Okay. The Lord of the Rings films made it enjoyable. It made it watchable yeah. and accessible and I think they did a really good job. They cut out all the shit and that's the one thing I'm worried about about this Lord of the Rings TV show is that they're going to put all that shit back in. The boring yeah. shit. Like Tom Bombadil. Oh my god, Tom Bombadil. And like all the... There's so many just, just descriptions of trees. Oh like, Jesus. Yeah, who cares? It's, it's a lot. Like it's very... Pain. I'm like, yeah, as, as same as you. I think I got halfway through the first book and then I just had other stuff I needed to read. Yeah. Um... I, I was just think... expecting to fly through it because I love the oh, films. But... Yeah, yeah, and you expect to because you think it's fast-paced, exciting, mm-hmm. fantasy, like YA. Yeah. And this is the thing, I think, this is why I don't think that we're going to lose nerd points because I think that the audience of YA is, this is exactly what we want. We want the fast pace, get it done, get it done fast, yeah. we don't need mm-hmm. all this boring crap and that's what the lord of the rings doesn't do well it's not it's the it's old the book's old like i can't blame the book yeah, well, it's aged. yeah it, exactly i don't i won't sit there and take it when other people sag it my <laughs> off. i think it's really like i think it's, i think it, other people need to learn from ya in that respect that they just the world building doesn't have to take a it just needs to be done on the way yeah, completely. Absolutely. If you like, I just, I can never, I could never sit through a fucking adult fantasy book. I don't think I ever will. I, I just struggle. I feel like YA just, they get the tone so much better. Whereas adult fantasy is really, it tries to be so pretentious, and clever, and wordy, and it just doesn't need to be. Like I agree. Like the world building I've read in some YA books has been so much better than some adult and like i just don't i don't gravity towards gravitate towards like adult fantasy anymore because it just bores me it does and like that's what the lord of the rings film does really well the films do really well they just get rid mm-hmm. of all that boring shit and i think that's another thing that when people make films out of ya fantasy books they try mm-hmm. and do the same thing but then cut out everything because because <laughs> yeah. that's what ya fantasy does it just cuts out all the boring bullshit yeah but you don't need to do that with ya because it's no. already done it ya is like pre-written ready yeah it's ready yeah. for you to make a film of already because exactly. of the way they do it the um, way it's manufactured but just and then they cut out all the substance percy jackson for example they just cut out mm, all of the substance when you didn't mean to substance. the book yeah. is 300 pages long did you need to cut anything out no no you did you could have literally just done it word for word and exactly uh speaking of lord of the rings a contemporary of um tolkien was c.s lewis so narnia is also one that has had Narnia's has had multiple um, film adaptations, and I grew up watching the BBC Narnia films. Same. And I love them. I think they're really fantastic. Uh, And then we got the the remakes, and they're also fantastic. And we, I mean, they they teetered off towards the end. (laughs) Yeah, the third one was, wow, okay, thank you for nothing. But the third one was shit. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Well, we all like the films because Ben Barnes is in them. That's the only thing they did really like. That's the only reason they're in the good section because it did good with Ben. Yeah. Do you know what it is about the films? Like, I really love that. It's in the good one because The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was... Wow. I think that's mm-hmm. half the reason that I love fantasies because I literally watched that and was like, oh, I want to be in a like, sick battle. With, like, Completely. Animal. It's, like, it's, just, so it's amazing. It's so magical. Fun fact, the reason I don't like James... I don't. I hate James McAvoy, the actor. Controversial, I know. I'm sorry, um, but the reason I hate him is because he, Mr. Tomner scares the shit out of me, and like, screams at me. I just think I'm. 
I'm of the opinion that like Mr. Tumnus is a nonce and like he should not have taken Lucy back to his house on his like it just weirded me out as a child. Yeah. So I can never I do not like James McAvoy because of that. I feel um, like nowadays you could not like Mr. Tumnus, no, you would not want to have a Like what's a shirtless man in the all. middle of the street that you've never met before you're going back to his house and he's either with his little weird flute going like staring in the eyes until you fall asleep. Yeah. No. no. What? No, not this. Full nonce. Anyway, sorry, yeah. that's on a tangent, but um, I think, yeah, I just think it was so magical, great, I loved it. I watched the BBC one as well, and that was kind of like, I don't know, I didn't quite get as much of the same magic. Yeah, I think, I think because I watched them so young, I watched mm. them on, uh, you know, when you could record TV onto like a VHS tape. Yeah. Um, we had those, and I remember. <laughs> lol so it tells me a lot about me now but um i thought the white witch was like the most glamorous amazing thing ever yeah so i used to i used to rewind it to her scene so much that the tape broke oh um so i think i just have nostalgia for it for that um and that's probably why my kind of visuals air towards um evil females probably um but yeah i think they the 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 modern films do a lot better at kind of having that high fantasy element rather than because the the old ones yes, like told I the agree. story whereas the yeah the new the ones like fan- made it fantasy yeah and that's when I was like going through like my Merlin stage and everything so it really did oh, pay up to like the yeah, fantasy the old Merlin. yeah that's what I loved about it and like when we met Caspian and everything it, like Narnia later on and I just loved yeah. it like the third one was terrible I can't even pretend that I like that film but the first two <laughs> Narnia films they're going in the good the other one's going in the bad yeah. um, um another fantasy that we love is Hell's Moving Castle um by Studio Ghibli or Ghibli yeah, that, whichever way you want to say yeah it. like an animated maybe we mm. should get more animated like series for YA fantasy I adaptions think- I think animated could do really well because you could I do stuff so. that you can't do with I agree. live action. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I read the House Moving Castle book. It's by Diana Wynne Jones, uh, and I prefer the film. <laughs> because, yeah, I can. Ima- I don't think you can um, top the film. The film was beautiful. If you haven't watched it, oh, what are you doing? The film's it's, phenomenal. It's like the perfect mix of whimsy and fantasy and magic and love and, and romance. Yeah. Oh, um, and the, like the the book itself is good. It has a lot of lore, uh, and the the core story is very similar. Um, but it part of it they go back to they go to modern Wales because Howl is a wizard from modern Earth. It's very bizarre, um, and like there isn't as much of a war as there is in the film. So there's not as many high stakes, um, which I think the film does really well. Um, yeah, I just think it's an absolute masterpiece, and yeah, that's it. There's like a bit I saw. I didn't. Um, I saw some TikTok. It was the bit where, like, you know, if you haven't if you haven't watched the film and you don't want to know what happens, just maybe skip till we've like a couple of minutes forward. But um, the bit where uh, how uh, and Sophia are in like the other dimension, and she goes find me find me and then um it's it's like a direct correlation to when he goes ah i've been looking for you yes. everywhere darling oh. at the start and i was like oh my god how did i not pick that up Literally. i loved it oh. it's just magical like that and you think oh my god this and like, i could not imagine it not animated that's the thing i could never imagine it, them doing it live action no. because it's just so it, it just perfect. wouldn't work yeah <sighs> I just love it. Yeah, so Hamilton oh. Moving Castle 100% is a fantastic adaption. It might even be better it. than the source material, yeah. Yeah. So, quickly on to series, like TV series. Jesus, we have a lot. We're going to have to do another we episode. Done, we, haven't done the ba- we haven't done the bad, but we love films. Fuck. It's going to be a long episode. I know. Next is bad ones that we love still. Even though they're terrible. Even yeah, the Golden Compass. Tr- oh, sorry, I'm just saying. <laughs> the Golden Compass. <laughs> well, yeah. So we're going to try and speed through these because we have been very passionate about the films um, and we have just looked at the time we've been recording. Um, and that is 
going to be fun for editing. Um, but my first one is Series of Unfortunate Events. I loved the film as a kid. Um, but now that we have had the Netflix adaptation, which is so much more faithful to the books, and I found out that like they didn't want to cast people of color in it, um, and they fired the they had the original writer of the books on set, and he wanted to hire people of color, and they said no, so he left. In the um, film, yeah, in the film, yeah, okay. um, and the and then they fired the director because he wanted to make it accurate to the books. Um, so they went to Netflix and made their own. Um, but, like, so the film is good, and like Jim Carrey is great as Count Olaf. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's why it's bad, but we love it. Nostalgia. I can't really but... comment. I can't really comment because I haven't read the books and I haven't watched the, the I series or the Whereas film. Well, I've watched the film. I... I didn't even think I've watched the film. If I'm being honest. Oh my god. I am Danny, sorry. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I have. I literally have a tattoo from it. So. I know. Uh, I can, the only thing that I can yeah. take from the films in the book is that I, can, I look I look at the film and I think, did they use the same kids? Because they look the same. <laughs> that, yeah, they literally do look the same. They do. I literally look like, oh, the same kids? I'm like, it couldn't be, but they look no, the same. No, they're not. They, <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they cast, they cast the film really well um, for the kids yeah. and Count Olaf. Um, but yeah, it just didn't. And then, this, yeah, at least with the series. So the series, they got to tell all the all the books like from start to finish, and it was done. So hmm. really good. I'll I'll maybe one day give it a go. My... I need you to watch it so you can be triangulize. <laughs> okay, I will. Okay. Um, in for my one is Harry Potter. I can't say that they were a good adaption because they're not. Well. No. Well, <laughs> first two. Okay. Um, okay, I mean, so, I, no, they're not a good yeah, adaption. I forget, I forget how inaccurate they are because I just accept them I as never. canon now, but then I remember the books and I'm like, oh. I'll never forgive David Yates for taking Ginny's personality and flushing it down the toilet. I'll oh. never forgive the films for making Snape out to be a nice person. Mm-hmm. I'll never forgive them for the Marauders erasure ever, <laughs> ever. I will never, ever forgive them for any of the things that they've done. I'll never forgive them for erasing Winky, ever. <gasps> Winky! I'll never forgive them for the peeves, for the peeves oh erasure, for it's making you. Ron taking all the good things about Ron and giving them to Hermione in the films. Oh. I'll never put... I'll just... It's just... The films are not good. I, I, and I think I watched blast the Blast-ended screws. Where's our blast-ended screws? Yeah, where are the blast-ended screws? I said to... I said... Where are the nifflers? Where are the nifflers in Harry Potter? Why do we only get yeah. them in Fantastic Beasts? Fuck that. Why? I like, like, like you said, I watch the films and I think... <laughs> They're so magical because I can't deny that I like the films. I do. I watch mm-hmm, them and I think, mm-hmm. wow. And I watched. I did. I watched them all the other day with my sister because we both love the films. And I literally sat there and was like, "This is nearly ten years old. This film is nearly ten years old. The last one, mm. and it looks like it was filmed yesterday. They are phenomenal production. Like I watch it and I think this could have been. Ma- you told me this was made last week and that I would believe you. But then yeah. I remember all the things that they miss out on, or how terrible they are, and I just think, oh god, they are terrible. They are bad. I know. Yeah. There's a thing. I feel this is a good time to discuss this actually, because there was a bit that this is what me and my sister always don't understand because Half Blood Prince is one of my favourite films. Mm-hmm. You know, when like so, Ginny's seen Dean, isn't she in the in the in that yes. film before she's with Harry, um and. One bit I I do not like about the films that is really sketchy is that like Harry and Hermione are at Sulcorn's party and Ginny walks in and she's crying and and then Hermione goes they've been fighting again and I'm going to myself what the fuck could have happened to make Ginny we her cry like that yeah and why is it that Dean has made her cry because. We don't know you. You sucked the life out of his character anyway in the in the films. Mm. You didn't. He doesn't have any lines. He barely has anything in the books, but he has more than what he does in the films. And then you make him like, it suggests that he's 
yeah, 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 abuse. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, what could he have done that would make her cry like that? Like, yeah. It, like, and that it's... doesn't sit right with me. Like, one of the only black characters in this whole thing. Yeah, and then the other one's called Shacklebolt. Like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I just sit there and I think, because that isn't... That isn't Joanne's writing. She never wrote that in the... It wasn't like that. No, her, no. her relationship with Dean wasn't like that in the books. It was... Yeah. Like, she was just seeing Dean. They were together. They were and just then seeing Dean. Went, it wasn't yeah. like a... Oh, my God. Yeah, and, Harry, you have to be a white saviour. <laughs> exactly. And that just is not good. Like, when I really no. watched that bit in the film, me and my sister always, like, catch up and we're like, why? What did he do? And I think it's worked because I'm older. I'm seeing it now. I'm going, mm. why? What could he have done that would make Ginny Weasley cry? Because she wouldn't take any of that shit anyway, no. anyway with all those brothers. And why weren't her brothers doing anything about it? And, like, Ron never does. I just hate... I, <sighs> and it's stuff like that I think you're bad. But I watch them... Yeah. I, I do... They, Dan Radcliffe makes me happy and Rupert Grimm make me happy and Emma Watson makes me happy. Like Those things make me happy, but the films and the directors really aren't. Well, and the creator yeah, of the whole we... series is not oh. a nice person. <laughs> no. So, stuff but like that. Because we grew up with them like at the same time, literally. Of course, yeah. It's like part of our childhood and our adulthood. So it's, yeah. it's hard to kind good. of... They're not good yeah. adaptions and some of the things that they did adapt were questionable racist yeah. <laughs> racist um, <laughs> yeah Oof. but yeah that's that's another one harry potter i do go yeah. on about harry potter a lot so you probably should have known that was going to be in there yeah completely um the, Na- the maze runner is another one that i really, I, l- I love the first one of the maze runner and i don't know why i think it might have something to do with it's just the cast Dylan O'Brien and yeah, I'm sim for the whole cast, and that's exactly why yep. that's in there. Completely, um, and then I've I've put Miss Peregrine's because it's completely different to the book, but I enjoy the film. It's literally like not even the same. It's like it's like they glanced at the book with a squint, and then <laughs> they even they changed two characters. They changed their powers. They aged people up, aged people down, changed the whole. It, it's a mess. It's a mess. So that's in there. And then also Golden Compass. Because I loved it at the time. And I still do love it. Um, but it's not a good adaptation of his dark materials. Um, I'm just the opposite. I hated the Golden Compass. I was like, why oh, would I yeah. ever read the books after that? Yeah. Oh, and that, and now we have the TV show, which is Yeah, fantastic. and then I watched the TV show and I was like, oh my god, I need to read the books. Because that is what the books are. So I just loved it because I thought, you know, when you're like, this is the only media I'm ever going to get of this thing oh, yeah. that I love. Yeah. Um. So I, I like threw my whole personality into it. I have like a replica of the theometer from the movie. Like, um, but now I'm so glad we have the show because the show is just chef's kiss. I agree. Well, yes, I do agree. I really love the show. Um, TV shows that are bad. So. <sighs> Cursed. I don't know if you've seen that. It's on Netflix. It's got Catherine Langford in. That that's bad. Have you watched that Deadly? No, I haven't. I, I avoided a, it. It's a retelling of like King Arthur. Um uh, okay. Yeah. But it it's like not Arthur, it's if someone else got it. Is it got the sword. Like, I I've seen yeah, yeah. I've seen all the posters of and stuff. Arthur is in it. Was. Oh, um, okay. But it's a bit different. It's just different. I didn't like it. I I tried to watch it, and I, I put on my story. I said, it says, does it get better? And everyone went, yeah, it does get better. Just push through. It's worth it, I think. And then I pushed through and still couldn't finish it. So, no. <laughs> it was bad. If you want to watch it... I can't picture Arthur as anyone but Arthur from Berlin. They... Like... He's like a mixed race guy. I don't know who oh. it is. Um, yeah. It wasn't the cast. He wasn't bad. I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. Um, if you're gonna watch an adaption, just watch Merlin. <laughs> yeah, ah, oh, Merlin. The BBC Merlin's version great. of Merlin, phenomenal. You can't. We end it. up on. I I keep ending up on Merlin talk every time. Like, after I talk to Daddy, I, I end up on Merlin talk. I think I saw something taking the piss out of the the end of Merlin with the lorry. Oh, I with haven't the really lorry. I haven't <laughs> seen a lot. Oh, I just, it's because I follow too many gay people and Merlin just had too many, it was so queer coded. Um, another bad TV show we have on our list. We only, we only have two actually, because most, we, we find that most TV show adaptations aren't that 
bad. I think because they, I think because with a TV show you have more time to tell the story of a book, they don't try and yeah. cram it in. Um, but the next one is Shinara Chronicles. I haven't finished the first book of Shinara. I started reading it when I watched the show because I thought, oh, this is an interesting concept. But it just feels very. It feels like how Aragon the film feels. Just yeah. like, not it, and you yeah. know, just like they just haven't got the vibe right. And they they cast like the main guy is really like attractive and really funny. Isn't it? But the like, girl just doesn't. Isn't it what? the Vanessa Hudgens' ex boyfriend? Possibly. Is he is he blonde? Yeah, he's blonde. Yeah, is I think it's it's Vanessa Hudgens' ex boyfriend. He was he's in he's playing Elvis in the new Elvis biopic, and he's in the new the Quentin Tarantino film, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, yes, yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, and like. If you want some fun fantasy, fine. Uh, if you're looking for something to scroll around with, but um, yeah, it's not. I wouldn't run to go see it. Look, uh, I'm, it's never called to me. It's something I wanted to watch. To be fair, <laughs> but um, yeah. And in terms of good um TV show adaptations, I've spoken about it briefly, but a series of unfortunate events. Um, they had Daniel Handler, who is L- Lemony Snicket, and um. They the set building, the world building. They've added more to it from the books, but in a way where it's not. It hasn't mm-hmm. taken away from the story. Uh, it actually embellishes it and makes a, the story make a lot more sense because the books have a lot of kind of cloak and dagger where you don't really know what's going on. Um, and yeah, it was just fantastic casting, really diverse, really amazing, really tongue in cheek. Um, yeah, I, I have no complaints. And like, yeah. I know that you really loved it, and if anybody was going to know, Hatcher me. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone's a good judge of it, it will be you. Yeah, completely. And, like, yeah, I have, so the uh, Count Olaf's tattoo on his ankle, I have on my ankle. I have the show design because I love the show so much. Um, yeah, 100%. Watch it. Um, it's three seasons of, like, eight episodes each season, so it doesn't take too long. Hmm. Um, but... The, and they, they cast a lot of the actors in it are uh, comedians instead of actors. Yeah. Because it's very tongue in cheek. So they really deliver the lines well because they're not trying to act. They're trying to just be this funny character um, in this really like sad tone, which is very, it's quite jarring, but it's good. Yeah. Good. I haven't watched again. I haven't watched or read anything, so I can't really yeah, add to it. Exactly. But I really, it's, I it's do like take you with, word for it. It's like when you were talking about Vampire Academy, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. And now I think we've already spoken about his dark materials um, a bit mm-hmm. as well, but it's just I haven't read the books yet, but I already it it feels like a book when I'm watching it. Mm. It feels like the book. Like whereas I hated the Golden Compass films, I really didn't enjoy it. <laughs> But I, I when I watched that, I thought this is just. I thought this was just a film that someone had made up. It was very Hollywood, but yeah, I think it's because yeah. it's the BBC and it, they got the vibes like, perfect on yeah. it. And the cast, Lin Manuel, like Lin yeah, Manuel Lin. Miranda, was oh, just yeah, Lee so good. Perfect. Lee and like Ruth Wilson, who plays Mrs. Coulter, is so good. Yeah, because Mrs. Coulter in the books is terrifying. She's unhinged yeah. and she's like she just wants to love Lyra. But she's so misguided. Yeah. And you're like, you can see why that she she's trying, but she's just not capable. Yeah. Yeah. Um Oh, it's so good. And all the witches. Oh, the witches are yes. so cool. Yeah. And Will. I, I love Will. Oh, Will's really good. I really like Will. Pan uh they Pan. it literally is like it's like the book, um, which is a feeling that you don't get that often. Um, yeah. Yeah completely perfect and yeah because it's a british company but it's also being funded by hbo yeah it's bbc and hbo they have that kind of yeah it's got the best of both worlds which is you can tell it's really good yeah um and the next one (laughs) is vampire diaries now i haven't read the vampire diaries but i know for a fact that vampire diaries are very different books are very different to the show now Mm -hmm. i love the show no, no shame I really loved the Vampire Diaries like it's not perfect it's not perfect but the entertainment is there Stefan and Damon Jesus have my heart I love them um, 
it's just so good. If you really like teen drama with some fantasy sprinkled on, The Vampire Diaries is for you. But obviously, if that's not your thing, it is not for you because that's what it is. It's just teen drama. It's not the most diverse, but it was made 10 years ago. I yeah, can't it's old pull now. it up. Yeah. yeah, it's old. They're old men now. But it's just classic, like Twilight, but a bit better. In my sexier. opinion, I think yeah, yeah, sexier Twilight, but make it sexier. Um, I love it. The film, the books are wildly different, apparently. So I'm not sure for like an adaption front then that you could consider yeah, maybe it that's good, more of the think, bad, but we love. Maybe. Yeah, but I think from my point of view, I really loved it. Like I really loved the Vampire Diaries. Like I've watched it a couple of times all the way through, and every time I go back, I think it's so good. It's just so good. Amazing. Yeah, I need to watch it. I haven't. I haven't watched it, so I need to. Need to get it's, on that binge. it's really addictive. You'll just binge it. They took it off Netflix, but they put it back on because everyone was outraged. Oh my god, amazing! Yeah, um, <laughs> that's how good it is. That's how obsessed everyone was. Was it? But yeah, it's just a head a heads up. It isn't the most. Piece. It's like it's a bit problematic, I guess. But like it is old, so you have to take that yeah. into account. That, you kind of take it with a pinch of salt, as you have to for anything made in that era. Kind of. Yeah. Right. Next. Oh. Bad but we love TV show edition top of the list Shadowhunters Jesus Shadowhunters because that show is not good it's not good I I will hold my hand up it's not good but it's bad guys it's bad it's bad and but okay we love it we love it because we knew we were never gonna get anything else that's yeah. exactly yeah, what yeah, you said yeah. earlier yeah we knew we were never gonna get any other adaption of these book series so we just no. had to take it and we embraced it and we got four seasons and we, sh- we were lucky we were lucky yeah, to get that we were fuming when they cancelled it but it was not good so we like, were fuming when we cancelled it because we had we needed one more we season one, and yeah, we would have got season, every and single we book finished it. Oh. yeah we would have finished it that's why we were fuming we weren't fuming because we thought it was genuine good tv no we weren't but, like the people who hired billboards on Times Square with no, hashtag should have saved Shadow Hunters. We weren't like we weren't that dedicated, but we were trying. Anyway, but, but, but we, we stand. The the cast obviously cared about yeah. the show a lot more than the film cast. I think that was the thing. They may mm. not have been the perfect cast. I don't think that Cat was the best choice for Clary. I don't think Don was the best choice for for Jace, uh, but Jace? I think that Magnus, Alec, Isabel, Simon, Simon Luke, uh, Mars. Yeah. I think not fucking Max, but we don't talk about Max. We oh my god, we'll Max do a Shadow Hunters died. episode. We'll, we'll, um. we'll do a like, Shadow Hunters <laughs> episode where we talk about Max. But every like the the main squad cast apart from Clary and Jace, I think was perfect. Yeah. The only uh, yeah, gripe. I mean... Yeah. Sorry, you go. I know what I was going to say, I mean, Alberto um, as Simon, A, he's incredible, B, he was so cute in all the pre-interviews before the series, because he just loved the books. Yeah. And he was also so happy, at, like, he was cast as Simon Lewis, because he's like, well, my name's Alberto Resende, like, what other show would... But it was just so yeah. well cast and diverse. It's so diverse, like, oh. yeah. The only I was gonna say the only gripe I had was that because Isabel is literally my favorite character. She's one of like mm. top five favorite characters of all time. Is that Emraude? Was she did not read the books and she did not care <laughs> that she didn't read the books. And so, fun fact: like they were at Comic Con when uh, one of the times we went to Comic Con, Deadly could not make it to the I, oh, panel. I was so bad. I got waylaid. But yeah, we'll get into but that. I, I went to the panel and the cast were there, like all of them, not not Matthew Daddario or uh, Henry Henry Shum, Harry. but yeah. Harry, not Henry. What the fuck? <laughs> um, Harry Shum were not there, but like Alberto, um, M. Rode. Oh, Dom wasn't there either. Al- yeah, uh, Catherine and Melion was there, wasn't Melion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Melion was there, and wolf guy jordan 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 he was there jordan yeah and i was i'm friends with the guy that does all the panels for ncm comic-con like i know him quite well and so i went up and spoke to him before and he was we were just friends we were just talking chris um 
and he I sat and waited for the panel I was there two hours early because I had to like see it and they were doing questions and like I got picked to ask a question because obviously I knew Chris so he wasn't not gonna give me the mic and I was like just because I knew she hadn't read the book <laughs> and I was like to be fair I was dressed as Isabel and I was like oh it's my favorite character and like I'm dressed as you and she said like, like earlier on in the panel that she she would love to play Wonder Woman if she could play anybody. She would have, mm. and like someone asked me like earlier that day, they were like, "Yeah, just as Wonder Woman, aren't you?" And I was like, "No, but no. go off." Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, it's funny you should say you said Wonder Woman because I was mistaken as Wonder Woman earlier, and I'm dressed as you." But then I was like, as a gripe, this really, I did this on purpose. I was like, "So, from the last series, are there any parts from the books that you're really excited to see on screen?" And her face she was like thunder because she hates it when people bring up the books because she hasn't read them and she 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 i remember she said i think christine like Pol- poland banana books on youtube you should check her out if you're a fan of shadow hunters mm. because she's like really yeah, good friends with cats great. and she has all the inside information and everything and she does really good videos on them she interviewed the cast before the first series came out and she went oh have you all read the books and she went and rode went well, I started reading them, but then I started getting really confused about what was happening in the show and what was happening in the book. So I just stopped reading the books. And I was like, and her face was like, Christine was like, oh my God, you're kidding. And I just remember like in my head, like, Jesus Christ. And then, so I did it as a gripe. I was like, what's your favourite thing about the books? And then like, Kat, Kat and, and Alberto were like, oh, I'm really excited for this. And they really got really excited about it. And it made me laugh, but she had a face like thunder. I just remember Lol. it. But it just made me laugh. I'm so mad I missed that panel. That'll be forever my like, absolute mad. But hey-ho. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also a lot of how we bonded as friends was the Shadow of the Show, because every week yeah. we discussed it. Um, yeah. For nearly like four um, years, because it was like every... yeah, literally uh, shadow reacts, shadow reacts, which we will be bringing back for shadow and bone. It'll be <gasps> shadow and bone reacts, shadow and reacts part two. <laughs> Jeez, that's so exciting. Um, but I just think the casting was fantastic. Like, Valentine, I loved how they they did Valentine uh, in the fo- in the show. Literally. Like charming, like just everything, and it was like more really? diverse yeah. and. It was, and they put so many Easter eggs in it. Yeah, that the you would only get if bad. you read the books. <laughs> yeah, the stories were bad, but we had like on their little screen. Even though I don't know why they had computers, because oh. the whole point is they're not supposed to. But I mean, it's TV, of course they're going to. But they had like a little Tessa profile and Katrina, um, and then they mentioned stuff in, in Magnus's apartment that was from the Bane Chronicles. Yeah, um, and there's yeah. like that Ultimate Universe episode where he's like, <gasps> church. Oh. And he says like, yes! church and chairman meow. And I was like, oh. We love the Java Jace episode. We so loved much. that episode. That The Ultimate Universe episode was hilarious. It was so good. Java Jace, Nerdy Worth it Izzy. for the whole show. Oh my God, Nerdy Izzy and Gay Alec. Oh my God. Gay Alec. Yeah. Oh my God. Like <laughs> Camp <planet>. Alec. <laughs> Oh, honestly, nothing is better. Wow. Oh, but that is kind of the end of TV shows because we there aren't that many um, no. YA to TV show adaptations yet. There is definitely more coming. Um, so we could definitely talk about our absolute tops and bottoms, um, which you can probably guess from what we've spoken about. But my absolute top adaptation is the a series of unfortunate events netflix series um and my absolute bottom is the aragon film because of what we have discussed and my absolute top is obviously no surprise hunger games catching fire phenomenal yes. can't beat it i don't think you'll ever beat it well hopefully shadow and bone will change oh, changes pray. for me um and bottom aragon jesus yep. Jesus, Aragon it's was bad. So bad. That, like, actually, that kind of to, yeah. actually, I might change my mind. I might go Ooh. Percy Jackson and see if monsters Ooh. because that is terrible. I can't even watch that. But I can, I can sometimes force myself wait, like through Aragon for jokes. But I can't even watch Percy Jackson that's the so second bad. one. So that's definitely it. Percy Jackson okay. and Sea of Monsters. Perfect. And then our last little bit is. Um adaptations we want from books or we think deserve a redo so straight out of the bat uh 
Aragon. Read it. Yeah. Do it as a TV show. Give it the time it needs to develop. Yeah. Bish bash bosh. Done. Yeah, it could be fantastic. Um, another one I think that would translate f- perfectly to TV, which I think that someone's already bought the rights for, but I could be wrong, is The Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Those books were made for film. Like, if you read the books, like, it's visual. They're visual reads anyway. So I think that would translate really well onto film mm. or, like, TV. I think it might be a TV show, actually. I'd hope so, because they're f- well, really yeah, good. I think TV works better. Yeah. And then similar to that, we have Aurora Rising, which uh, I could be wrong, but I think that's being made into a... Oh, is films, it? Or, yeah, films or TV series. I, I mean, I could even see those being films because they are yeah. literally, like, the first book is a film, the second book yes. is a film. Yes, I agree. I could like, see them doing it as films. But they're just so good. We've oh, both about it before. Deadly's just yeah. recently finished them, so we're both massive fans of those yeah. books. And I think we need more sci-fi. Because I think sci-fi, like, really translates film and TV better than Mm -hmm. fantasy does. So I don't know why we don't do more. Yeah, I feel like it would be... And the way it's written, it would be such good films. Yes. And then, like, similar to that, we've got Cinder. That's, like, sci-fi fantasy. And Cinder would be good films, too, because each... Yes. ...book is, like, a fairy tale, so... Yeah, yeah, you could do that in films if... the on the long side but i think that, that would yeah. be good yeah i feel like actually if you did a season per book it would probably be better like tv show wise but that's just in general for everything yeah and then i think i think we've we've both put sorry god i'm stirring right we've also put throne of glass down mm-hmm. as a tv series i think that was rumored to be in production like years ago yeah. i'm thinking about it now now we've, we have put it down. Who could ever play Aelin? Yeah. No, I don't know who could. I honestly... Like, Akatar, I feel like they could do because yeah. the characters will translate, but Aelin as a character is so complex and hard to nail down. Yeah, I don't know if we could. they could do it well. No. <laughs> I I, no. I I feel like we, I feel like we... <laughs> yeah, well, we would get... Because Throne of Glass is both of our like one of our absolute top YA series both of us so I feel like mm-hmm. we would go into it with a very critical eye yeah um like because we, we, we know believe that series is perfection we know people aren't happy about this um Akatar series being made yeah there's been a lot of negativity and Ooh, bullying too much that we are not happy about no, um, from fans, it's disgusting. So we're not going to accept unquote, any of fans. the. Yeah. We can be criticize. We can criticize things, but also be respectful of people, yeah, and that is not what bully. the fandom are doing. Like, yeah, yeah, um, it's horrible. But we would definitely would not be like that. About we will be critical because it, we understand that it means a lot to people, but we have to be respectful over. I think also we're more adult than. Because a lot of the Akatar now has a lot of younger fans, which also worries me because they are very adult. Um, yes. But I feel like they it's a lot of that generation that will still go online and attack someone if yeah. it doesn't align with their views. Whereas because we've grown up with social media not being always there, yeah, it's kind of like that distinction where we know it's not real. Yeah. I mean, another series that isn't actually on our list, but I just remembered when you said about buying rights, is related to a series of unfortunate events. There is a prequel series of four books, and Netflix have bought the rights to that. Oh, that's exciting. Um, and that, I think, would be very... Because it's, it's nothing to do with series of unfortunate events. <laughs> um, it's like an old detective novel style. Okay. So I, I think they could do it really well if they did it in the style of like an old detective show. Yeah, um, that'd be quite good. I think that, especially since we've seen like Wonder Vision stuff, like going yeah, back to, like, completely because that's all type. done really well. Yeah, and I think they could cut because it's very ambiguous in the descriptions as well. So I think they could cast it really diverse because like his woman that he's like trailing just has wild hair, so like that could easily be a black woman or could be anyone. Yeah, a woman um, of color. Yeah, yeah. I um I agree. That'd be good. That'd be interesting. I might watch that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it, it, I feel like it's more your speed because it's more 
I don't know. Series of unfortunate events is very gothic and kind of you have to be in the right frame of mind. Yeah, right? that isn't really my thing, but yeah, okay, I, I, I trust you. I'll be, I'll be looking out for that one. And then <laughs> the last one on our list is the Cruel Prince, because we've known about this for a while. Because obviously, mm-hmm. Deadly and I went to the signing of the second one. Wicked King. Is it Wicked King? <laughs> Wicked King. Yeah, it Wicked was Wicked King. King. And that's when it was announced on our tour. Um, that they were yeah. making a film or two series, I can't remember which one. Um, so yeah, we're excited. We can't wait to see Cardin and Jude. My, I fancy the yeah. shit out of Jude, so <laughs> uh, we, I'm excited to see who they cast as Jude. She's so cool. I want to be Do her. Jude Cardin? Oh, no, oh, Jude. Okay. Dude, okay, go for I really it. Love yes, Jude. Go off. I think she's one Jude of, is like, great. She's, like, she's such yeah. a great protagonist. I have I cr- have a crush on Cardin as well, but I, I mean, really both love of them Jude. are great. Yeah, it's oh yeah. I I think it could be really fantastic if they give it the budget it needs and do like beautiful costumes. Yeah, to have like a nice like classic fairy, not like fae, not like fairy porn, but like classic like woodland. Yeah, like fairy fairies. Yeah, yeah like... Like going into fairy. Um, I think that would be really exciting to see and really nice on screen. Mm. Yes, I think that's the end of it. Oh, yeah. This has been a long one. I don't know how long this will be once it's edited. But, um... Jesus. Yeah. So, we're going to do our what we read this month and what we recommend. Yeah. Um, we both have read the same, but you've read more than me because I've been slowly working through Chain of Iron. Yeah. I am almost finished. I have an hour left. Um, I will go into it when we do our podcast about it, but... I have bought four copies of this book, <laughs> and I've been loving it. I, I definitely recommend it um, if you're a Shadowhunters fan. If not, get the one before it and read it, because you can pick it up from that. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's my book of the month, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. And I've also read Chain of Iron this month, but I'm also reading Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. i am literally just started that book, but... I'm already loving it so much. I'm not going to lie. It's the last one um, in the King of Scars duology. If you haven't read any of Lee's books, read them, especially Six of Crows and King of Scars because they are fucking fantastic. And the new Grishaverse TV series is coming out this month. So you need to pick them up and race through them as quickly as possible because they are so worth it. And the film, the show looks phenomenal and it was part of the inspiration for this episode. So we definitely recommend it. Um, obviously, we've been talking to you for way too long now, so we're gonna go. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna Finally. go. Enjoy, let you enjoy your time. Um, yes, enjoy but, your time. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed hearing us ramble about things we love and hate about adaptations. Um, we definitely we're would probably love to hear gonna from do you. another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we go into if you want to hear us talk about anything in depth, like if you want to hear us talk about the Hunger Games in depth, if you want to hear us talk about. Shadowhunters in depth. If you want to hear us talk about Akatar in depth, shoot, we'll probably do an Akatar episode where we talk about the show when casting yes. happens and stuff like that. But if you want to hear anything, just let us know. We're more than welcome to like hear anything yeah. that you guys yeah. have to we, say. We really want to know what you guys club. want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, you're a part of our book club. You're our Valkyries. So yeah, please, our little Valkyries. Let please, us know. Yes. DM us on Instagram at your basic podcast. Um, Twitter at your basic 16. Yeah. And TikTok. We have a TikTok account now called at your basic podcast where we have joined BookTok. Yeah. And I'll be posting more content soon. There's a bit on there where we talk about like pe- like books yeah. with PSU characters in and like characters that we hate and this that, and the other. It's a bit like this, but like a short video. But like so. a short form. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to follow us on there go ahead and just literally message us comment let us know what you think we are yeah we love hearing from you and um until we see you next time stay safe and happy reading yes goodbye